Good, um, gosh, is it two in the morning already? Good morning. Look, I am an old priest and I just want to sleep in and something is always disturbing me. It's either the temple plumbing or, or it's my plumbing, you, 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 you know what I mean, or or it's a cockerel crowing and, and shut up and let me sleep. I am exhausted and listless and disappointed with my family and disappointed with my ministry and disappointed with my country and disappointed with my life. I Twice already, young Samuel, young, young Samuel's come to, to wake me up and said, did you call? No, go away. Did you call? No, I didn't. Go away. And now he's back for the third time. I, I can hear his bare feet on the temple corridor coming in my direction, saying once again, he, he's going to say, did you call me? He doesn't even use the Hebrew verb system the way I do. His generation have a different dialect. I can't be doing with it. Just one thing, though. Samuel may be a child, but he's reliable. If he says someone's calling him, someone's calling him. And it isn't me. And there's no one else here. Unless, unless God's at it again. In these days, the word of the Lord is rare, but it hasn't always been like that. It, it's been a long while since God was evident in the land. and I sometimes think God gets more sleep nowadays than I do, but God isn't dead. Maybe God's starting something new. And if God is starting something new, it makes sense that it would start with the children. Not that old priests like me have no role, but, but our role is mainly to encourage the young and listen to what they're saying. It's so easy to be cynical and fail to believe that spring follows winter. So, so easy to be selfish and neglect the challenge of the young before, because we prefer the comfort of the old. So easy to be more like a consumer than an adventurer. Hello, Samuel. No, come on in, come on in. Sorry, um, it seems like you're hearing God. So go back to bed, and when you're aware of God again, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel, most of us never hear a voice when we're aware of the call of God, but in the silence, just you being you in the presence of God being God, maybe you'll be aware of bringing things to the surface of your mind. Don't push it. Don't pretend you're certain when you're not, but be open to the possibility of a call. And when you've learned to be aware of God in the silence of the night, you'll also start to bring God things you notice in the daytime. You'll say, I, I, I don't know, God, here's a thing in Israel that I've noticed and it bothers me. And then you and God will muse about it together. And maybe you'll find your mind drawn to a certain passage of the scriptures that you're learning to read. And out of that will come a new certainty of what you should do and Sorry, Samuel, I'm, I'm making it all a bit too complicated, aren't I? All you need are seven words. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel, go back to bed and listen. Oh, and Samuel, good luck.
There he goes. Don't think I'm going to get back to sleep tonight, though. And it's not just the plumbing or the waterworks. Deep down, I do have a sense of what God's going to do. Man of God came and told me a few months ago, God is going to make some changes around here. God's going to reorganize worship in Israel. And God's right. I know God's right. But that didn't make it easy to hear. Like a lot of older people, I'm happier facing backwards and seeing the good old days than facing forwards and seeing the good but difficult new days. I, I mean, part of me still wishes we could go back to the good old days, but for me, the good old days were the time of Samson, and Samson was psychotic, and he died 25 years ago demolishing a sports stadium as he went. So maybe the good old days weren't that good after all. In the morning, I'll have to encourage Samuel to tell me what he's sensing God saying. Even though he's a good kid and he's fond of me and he won't want to tell me the bad news. Samuel will be gentle with me and give me time to get used to it. I need that. But I'll tell him not to get too attached to the way we do things in the mo at the moment. I reckon this whole temple's going to get packed up and moved somewhere else, maybe Jerusalem. And that will be part of a new golden age for the people of God. But I will no, not see that in my lifetime. I haven't been a very good priest, but this much I know. God is the Lord, and I'm not. And in the long term, the very long term, I can trust God to do what's right. And just encourage the younger generation to do things their way in their stupid, non-archaic Hebrew, with their psalms written by shepherds and travelling singer-songwriters. When I'm dead and gone, everything I did will be lost and forgotten. except the love and support that I can still give to youngsters like Samuel. That will live long after Shiloh. He might even write a book and put this bit in. Good night.